pot planning board meeting, and we have a number of discussions on the agenda for tonight. Um, uh, the first being a discussion of the ZRC proposed changes to home business. So, unless anyone has any objections, I think what, what makes sense is to have Carolyn give us a brief run through, although we've heard this once before. Right. Uh, open it up to public comments, and then um, either have the board discuss or perhaps move on to chickens if there are folks in the audience who would like to um, comment on that. So maybe we can play that for quite a year. Good. Okay. Take it away, Carolyn. Um, so you've seen this probably in a number of um, dimensions, I guess you should say, um, at, this, at the public forums. Um, and then recently, probably a month, but maybe in August, I think is when we looked at it and decided to have, try to get um, feedback from um, some other folks on this as well. So um, the idea, uh, just to refresh everyone's memory, for people who weren't um, part of the original conversation, the idea is really to allow more flexibility for home um, business use and sort of increase the threshold um, before which um, people need to get a special permit. Right now, the home business um, ordinance requires um, that if you are seeing clients or um, have an employee in your home, then that um, triggers a special permit. So the idea would be to allow some modest amount of activity out of your home business, meaning either clients um, or employees, um, without triggering a special permit. And then if you have above that threshold, that would still trigger a special permit. And then the zoning board would review that. Um, and the way the zoning revisions came up with, the zoning revisions came up with the idea of doing it um, based on trips generated to a site. Um, so uh, how many vehicle round trips to um, a place. And they wrangled with the numbers quite a bit back and forth. Um, there was one, um, I think one of that, part of that is shown in the, um, in the draft. There was one edit that wasn't quite made in there, but it's supposed to be, um, I think, seven round trips per maximum per day, but then on a weekly basis also have a cap um, at 25, and I think 30 was in the draft. But So, you know, nothing set in stone, obviously, you're here to mull it over and get more comments and whether or not that's even an appropriate um, um, way to measure impacts on neighborhood. So that's in a nutshell. I don't know if you want me to go over the details of the language more or... Um, I sense that that's going to be the big issue, so maybe if you could give a little bit more background if you know on how ZRC decided to measure it that way and how they came to those numbers, if you know. Yeah, I, um, I think part of it was sort of looking at, well, you know, what, what's, what's the problem with a, with a home business? You know, if someone's having um, teaching music lessons or if someone has um, clients coming three times a week or whatever the number is, that the impact is mostly about parking and cars. And there was a lot of discussion about trucks and deliveries and how um, um, packaging trucks, FedEx, UPS, are pervasive everywhere in every neighborhood and whether or not someone has a business. And so um, typically now, home businesses could um, really blend in much more than maybe they could a decade ago or so when people weren't ordering like crazy off of Amazon. <laughs> Um, so that was sort of one thing they looked at, and then I, the other slant was, well, what if someone lives in a neighborhood and they hire someone who also lives in the neighborhood and they're walking there? Does that really matter if they have an employee in their home who's walking? So that's not an in, that's not the same kind of impact they felt as as driving. So um, I think also since you can't, since it would be hard to legislate, you know, if you're if you're walking to see your your consultant or to go work for your employer, then you don't need a special permit, but if you're driving, you do. So this is sort of a way to um, allow some <coughs> And then in terms of the number, um, I think people were just sort of thinking about what would start to feel uncomfortable in a neighborhood. 
Um, so it wasn't as though there's a magic bullet out there and there's all these communities around the country saying, well, after seven trips per day, it gets crazy. It really was um, sort of thinking about what that might feel like. Um, and there was a lot of debate back and forth about whether it's four or five or, um, and then whether or not there should be a weekly maximum as a sort of another way to cap it. And the other issue about um, the number of trips um, was there was a discussion about whether there should be weekday hours of operation um, established as sort of a threshold and which days of the week. Um, and they didn't really want to get into that because everyone's business is, is different and um, so this is another way to sort of um, allow that to be spread across whatever days make sense to that individual person. Um, and finally, can you just run through what the, where we're at in the process and what else would need to happen <coughs> just for folks who might know that? Sure. So you got a package from the Zoning Provisions Committee in July that sort of was their debriefing of all the work they had done over the last couple of years. Um, and then two specific packages, the one on home business and, and then some less refined language about resident changes in the residential districts for zoning. And um, so the committee sort of had worked hard, um, mostly on these two items that are um, for discussion tonight as a way to show how it might look in, as in ordinance form. And so really, at, at, at this point, it was a handoff to the board and for you all to decide whether to move forward with something like this, get more outreach, and make modifications, or decide that it's not something that you all want to address as a board. And if it is something that you want to address as a, as a board in ordinance form, then you could, the next step would be to make any modifications you felt necessary, then draft an ordinance, sponsor an ordinance that would go to city council once it gets to city council, it gets referred out for an official public hearing, probably to um, subcommittees of EDLU um, ordinance and then planning board. Um, and then after that official public hearing process, it would go back to city council for a vote. So this is you know, pretty much at the beginning of the process. Okay. Questions from the board? I'm wondering, Carolyn, were other issues, did other issues come up in the CRC like noise or the, the type of neighborhood and how many home businesses might be per block, for example? Yeah, certainly in the public forums there were, there were concerns about noise and noise of, from people who even don't have home businesses, but people projecting that if, I, if this noise bothers me, then certainly if they had a business that would really bother me. Um, and smell came up too, as you know. But the whole idea is behind the existing ordinance, and even that sort of would carry forward in any change, is that it really should be invisible. The idea is that your home, your, the primary use of the residence is for your home. And um, so any kind of noise that would exceed the noise limits for that neighborhood would be an enforcement action. Um, and I think, and so they address that, I guess. The that. numbers of business, home businesses in one particular block, I mean, something, was there ever <coughs> thought about that? Like if every house on the street has a home business? Yeah. I mean, seven trips times, you know, right. 30 or 40 houses. I mean, was that? You know, I don't recall that as being a particular topic of discussion. Um, I think knowing sort of, uh, knowing that not everybody's, it's not necessarily for everyone to be working at home and that there will always be, a, there's an assumption that there will be a mix in, in any given neighborhood. Um, and that Sometimes there are people who stay home and don't work anyway, and so they're home all day and making trips back and forth. Um, and I guess it's just sort of that balance. How do you allow people to start up with as little cost as possible for um, a business 
this or um, some work and balance, balancing that with um, you know, concerns about maintaining that residential character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that one of the points that was raised in one of the letters I saw was about operating businesses in a multi-family dwelling, for instance, where you have a lot less privacy from the new generators. Does, the, does anybody else raise this issue much? Or that well, that did come up in the public forum, certainly in a condominium context and a concern that people would not know who's coming in you know, the front door or what have you. Um, and yes, there was discussion about that, that you know, there may be condominium rules that say you can't operate a business out of your condo, or there may be other private controls um, that would address that. Certainly in a landlord-tenant situation, the landlord might have a stipulation about what's allowed within a building. Um, and the committee discussed that and felt like it's too bad um, Stephen can't be here tonight because he certainly was part of that conversation as well and might have some other insights into it. But really that um, people have um, friends coming and going or visitors of one type or another <coughs> coming and going without the other tenants or the other condominium owner knowing necessarily who's coming in the building. Um, and that, so it would very much be like that scenario is sort of what, where they came down. Carolyn, could, if I were renting, uh, could I stipulate that a bit home business could not be done if it were a right that somebody could do with their residence? I mean, is there a conflict there? I mean, could, I, could I write their You mean as a landlord? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, section, this ordinance, whatever it is that you've put out, you refer to home business and there's a definition, but then you go right into home businesses. Does this suggest that people could have more than one business in their home? <coughs> issue and I wondered how are you going to um, track traffic generation how are you going to measure additional parking congestion this is especially a problem for me, my husband, is that um, <coughs> four residential units are being carved out of an existing structure located behind our house. Um, the, the 
drive is a shared drive. It is over 200 feet long. It goes through the middle of our yard. And it is 10 feet from our 150-year-old house. Um, in theory, um, these four residential units could all have a business. And in theory, they could all generate um, 25 trips a week. That means, you know, 100 additional trips going by 10 feet from our house. And I really think that is a problem. And I would hope that you could address it in some way. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, are other folks here to speak about chickens? Yes, OK. So should we move on to chickens and then come back to home businesses? I think we can keep them straight. Let's do it. So the history on this is um, uh, sort of parallel, a little bit similar, but there was a subcommittee for those early residents that really worked, was working on urban agricultural issues and really then honed in on chickens because <coughs> they heard from people that the number of allowed chickens currently, which is three, um, was far too low. And so um, we're urged to really um, change that. So they sort of changed, they altered their focus and um, really tried to hammer out what would be appropriate for increasing that number. And, it's, and you know, we've heard over the years um, uh, people who have said that, you know, three is, is not enough and when are we going to change it? So it's not something that's new, certainly. Um, the last I don't know, five or even more years, um, we've had requests regarding that. So, Zoning Revisions Committee really got the message that um, that number needed to be increased. And they went out and did research, talked to, looked at other towns, talked to people who really know about the chickens, and uh, came up with 12 as a as a number um, that should be increased. And they did talk about, I think they did discuss a little bit about lot size, but not a straight lot size, um, but more about calculating how many square feet per chicken on a parcel. And that would be the determining number. And that was far too complicated to, to you know, have people submit, you know, I have, I'm going to have 10 square feet um, for my chicken, so therefore I'm going to be able to get um, 12 or 15 or whatever. So the number is 12 in front of you, <laughs> and it really hasn't gone out. Um, we haven't had, there was no outreach to the general public really about um, this ordinance in particular. It really was based on research and discussion with the people who um, understand about it. <coughs> I mean, there are other there are modifications to sort of simplify the ordinance. Um, but basically. So all of this language about the um, where it, where it's set apart from the, where the coops are set apart from yep. property boundaries and um, abutting parcels. That's all new language. That's all new language. So. Somebody else has to do the math for me here, but I'm thinking in many neighborhoods, especially downtown, if you would have zero chickens. Right. And currently you can have three. Right. So the pro chicken people are reducing the number for a fair amount of city, a uh, fair amount of residents. I mean, I just want to make sure I understand this. Is there a logic behind that? Or? Um, yeah, I think they got feedback that, you know, they were trying to sort of reduce the concern about nuisance and making sure there's enough separation for smell and noise and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think based on the dramatic increase in the number, they felt like this might offset some of that, some of that concern. Was there any discussion about changing the number based upon how, you know, what section of town or how, how close the houses tend to lie? Um, there may have been, again, it sort of came, um, uh, there was a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes conversations about what what made sense. So I wasn't, I, I didn't participate in all those conversations. When it did come back to the full committee, 
they had sort of, they talked about how they had gone over around sort of a lot of those discussions about whether it should be based on lot size. The other, the other concept is to make it as simple as possible. So there's, there, there isn't um, the requirement to do lots of calculation and proving that you live, you know, what, where you live, what your <coughs> number is. So the other balance is, is creating an ordinance that's very easy to understand and um, applicable in most cases. So, you know, there are some, um, East Hampton, I know, has a threshold, not necessarily, well, they do have, they do by zoning districts and um, lot size, but 15,000 is sort of the minimum lot size before you can do it by right, as opposed to special permit. <coughs> has a similar um, thing. They allow it in all districts, but in certain districts, um, it, you have to have a certain lot size before it's by right. Um, so, you know, there are different, those different approaches. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're right that with really small lots and, and tightly set parcels that um, this would um, exclude some people from having any chicken at all. Other questions from the Yeah, I mean, um, I've got to admit that 12 chickens sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> how, how many eggs does a, a chicken produce? I mean... 250 a year. So... Almost one day. Almost one day. Okay, so, so 12 chickens are cranking out, you know, 40 plus eggs a, a week. That's a lot of eggs. That's, that's, that's a hell of a lot of eggs. It's a whole business. That's a whole business. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm looking at this number and I'm thinking I can, it seems excessive. Can we just, can I just suggest that we hold discussion until after we've heard from the public to just ask questions of Karen? But, okay, but, um, you know, it's, that's a lot of eggs. We talk about East Hampton and Amherst, they, um, by zone or by lot size, they limit, do, you, do we know what those limits are? <laughs> Five, eight, four. Yeah, um, uh, let me just pull that up. I think, um, uh, I think Amherst is 12. Um, but some of that is 12,000 or more by right. Um, and he didn't indicate that this was a, you know, currently that this is a big issue 
for enforcement. Other questions from the board? Okay. Uh, whoever wants to speak from the public, come on up. Okay, sure. a question? Sure. Okay, if you come on up and or stand up and state your name and then address, uh, please. Terry Colhane, Stern Court. You had indicated earlier that there is a setback. Yeah, do you want to talk about that, Carol? Yeah. Or I'm um, so the proposed. Yeah, I can read it. Uh, the proposed language is that there would be um, uh, coops have to be located at least four feet from property boundaries, and no coop may be sited closer than 20 feet to an existing residential structure on an abutting parcel. Am I up? Sure. Um, I'm Julie Culhane. Um, Terry and I live on Stearns Court, which is off of Monroe Street, just outside of downtown. Um, I um, am also wondering about where the number 12 came from. Um, and it seems to me also that, that that's a big increase suddenly. So I wonder if there was any discussion about having some gradual increase um, where, you know, if if there aren't any issues or any problems, then it could automatically be increased a year from now or whatever. Um, Terry's question reminded me also that um, chickens do need some housing, and um, I think it would be interesting to know what size coop um, 12, 12 chickens would, would need, because that is the kind of thing that impacts on the neighborhood and neighbors. So I don't. So if, if there's not been any discussion about a gradual increase, I would. Um, um, suggest that. Do you know, Carolyn? Uh, chickens for dummies is three square foot per chicken. <laughs> All right. And uh, twice as much for their run. So you would need, if, if your coop is six by eight, then your run sh should logically be about twice that size. Okay, great. So where did the number 12 come from? Just. Uh, Eggs have a dozen. <laughs> no, I mean, Thank really, you, Randy. It, it did sort of come down to that sort of how when you order chicks, <laughs> seriously, the number, yeah, <coughs> and that it, and you know, you have some amount that may not survive, and so well, there's also know. the overhead of building a coop for mm -hmm. you know, it's a major effort to. It's not a casual endeavor to decide you're going to build a coop and put up a run. So I think that maybe the idea was if you're going to do that, you want to make it worthwhile for maybe more than <coughs> Because that, you're, you're right, it's way more eggs than one family is going to eat. So I guess just in general, I, I do want to go on record as supporting home um, uh, gardens and produce I, and, and chickens. I think that's a great sustainability goal for us to have. Um, I just wonder about the number. Hi, my name is John Gay. I live on Wall Street, which is in Ward 3. Um, as you know, Ward 3 and Wall Street in particular is a tightly clustered area. And I have the, uh, the advantage, in a sense, of having neighbors who have chickens. Um, and part of my problem is that since it is mostly multifamily, they seem to skirt the existing bylaws by <clears throat> having three sets of chickens on one side and three or four more sets on the other. Um, <clears throat> it sounds like from what I'm hearing that, that what's being proposed uh, might obviate their ability to have chickens, which would make me somewhat of a happier neighbor. Um, but I, I would like to get some clarification as far as um, how multifamily homes uh, would be applied to this proposed ordinance, uh, and also what the enforceability is. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm understanding now that there's some some restrictions and some um, ideas as to what coops um, would qualify and what aren't. Um, is there a certification process that would be involved in having uh, having chickens on your property, assuming that you comply with the uh, square footage that's being proposed? So there are two questions out there. Really. Uh -huh. There's no language about that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the other things um, that I noticed <coughs> in the Hampton Ordinance um, is that it's by parcel, the number, and our ordinance right now is, is about use, accessory use to a residence. So I think, theoretically, correct me if I'm wrong, Wayne, but I think that someone, you know, if you had a multifamily, each family could have three chickens because it's 
um, it's not, it doesn't specify that it's per lot. Right. And so I think that would be an appropriate um, thing to consider that, um, you know, that you might want to consider it by lot as opposed to by unit. I mean, uh, homes there generally sit on 12,000 square feet of land. Um, and theoretically, um, and I don't, I don't know the restrictions that are being considered, um, you could have 24 chickens on a very tight lot. Um, and I think one of the reasons that um, you haven't heard complaints about is that people try to be good neighbors. Um, and so when we're talking about three or four chickens, we all agree in a sense of sustainability and, and Michael Poulin and all the kind of stuff that we, we read about and advocate. But there's a, a certain threshold I would suggest that six, three is okay, six might be approaching it, 24 is extreme. Um, and that doesn't even speak to three family houses that also exist on Wall Street as well. The other question I would have too is that um, are there particular rights that tenants would have as opposed to homeowners? I mean, the, the, the people that I have a particular issue with on my street are tenants. Um, and I think there's a general absentee landlord there who doesn't really care what's going on with his particular piece of property. Um, so he says, go ahead and have as many chickens as you want. Uh, so would the, would the qualification be on the landlord or would it be on the tenant? Well, the require it would be the person who's occupying the space would, um, you know, the the allowance would be the person who's there, not necessarily the, the owner. Mm -hmm. So then I think it would depend on what we said about keeping animals. Yeah. Well, those are my concerns anyway, and I appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> okay, great. Sorry, I'm sure. Hi, my name is Dave Lively. I'm from Burks Pit Road. And I just wanted to bring up one point, which I haven't heard, but I missed some of the meetings, so I might miss it. And that is that chickens don't just give you eggs, they also give you chicken. <laughs> and so having just three chickens, if you plan to eat them, yeah, that's not much. The second one is that the lot size restriction is a clever idea, and it's a good idea. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Things. If, if um, the chickens, whatever the number, are giving more eggs than producing more eggs than the family can consume, and it becomes a home business, does that mean there's also a retail piece um, that would be part of this? Or how? Does, how does well, we haven't really well, that's not about. I mean, that would, yeah. I mean, it's going to play out that way. Isn't it? I think actually, in order to sell eggs, you're, you're in a food service business, and you would have to have an inspector. I mean, I think that opens up a whole different thing if you were really making a business out of it. Now, I don't know that somebody would do that for their backyard business, but I think you have to actually certify them in some way as safe, don't you? And that would make sense to me, but, you know, I'm not sure people who set up lemonade stands do that. <coughs> well, you see them sure on the roadside. Yeah, right, and I'm not know. sure selling them at, you know, the farmer's market is going to make that. I mean, I think we're ignoring <laughs> That probably should. If we're having, if this ordinance is making it fine to just have hundred, produce hundreds of eggs each week, people are going to have to do something with them besides eat them. So I just wonder if there should be something in here that addresses that. And, and the other question I had was um, about the rooftop. If you have a flat roof, can you have chickens fenced in on the roof with that? <clears throat> that would fit this uh, location issue, wouldn't it? You want to Are you thinking about this? something? I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's always a problem. It's still a chicken right yeah. <laughs> Maryland, uh, <clears throat> traditionally, uh, when we bought the building on Main Street, there was a uh, pigeon coop. Mm -hmm. But people used to race. I mean, they did. They do it in New York City. Yeah, I'm just thinking, do we want to include that as an option? Well, I don't think it necessarily excludes that. <laughs> it doesn't say um, it's because yeah. it's four feet. Uh, it just says, four feet yeah. And 20 feet. And 20 feet. Right? It, it, it gets to be dangerous. much harder to clean, if you think about it, though. You've gotta, you ought to clean your coop once a week, you know, and change the bedding. and So you're going to carry that down through your building to get it out. You know, so there is a, an aspect to it. I know in 
Isn't that where the dumpsters are on the back side? Yeah, well, I, yeah. I, I think we need, I, I want to say I'm absolutely all for this, um, but I, I do see it as needing a little more structure. Um, I, I uh, had played out the one from Amherst because I knew they had the same number of chickens, and I called their animal control officer and talked to her, and I said, hey, what, what have you had experience with? What happened? And she didn't have much bad to say about it. She said she hadn't had any trouble. In fact, she's astounded to find, you know, tile chicken coops in someone's backyard, you know. But but they've got a pretty structured way of thinking about this. You know, they, they go and inspect them before, you know, you pay $10 to get your, you know, registration fee for a coop. Then the building, the animal person goes out and inspects it. And that's where they get into appropriate for the size of lot. So she's got the discretion to say, you've got more here that makes any sense for the size you're dealing with, which would, I think, answer your situation. But um, specifically, Board of Health does not want to go down that road. I'm sure they don't. But if we are going to go check it all over down, I think we have to be prepared for that. And that's where I like the, there's, there's some way to say it's going OK, or, you know, it's I mean, they, Board of Health is not opposed to having a registration process so that at least if something happens, if there's an outbreak of some sort, that they know right. where the birds are. But they don't want it to be an onerous process. They don't want it to be expensive. And they certainly don't have the capacity to do inspections. Right. Those I, I don't know if they do or not. I, I just am saying that's what's working. <coughs> Swoop, we killed every chicken on the farm because they were causing the herd of cattle to test positive for brucellosis. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they weren't kicked, they were just, they weren't diseased. I mean, we need to know, if, you know, I mean, it, it certainly makes as much sense as, as dogs, you know, which we do know how many dogs are in town. Right, but we, don't, we also don't check to make sure people are walking their dogs appropriately and giving them enough space and all of that. So I think that's the road that. Yeah, but if the dog is being a nuisance to the neighborhood, the same process would apply. I mean, but so I think we ought to write it with some guidance that says if Louie gets called out because there's a problem, you know, being recorded, or maybe it didn't Louie out, you know, I don't yeah. Know uh, doing yeah, it seems like somebody's got to own it. <coughs> I think we, yeah. we ought to put just some parameters. But I want to say I'm absolutely all for it. I just, I could see spaces where it just wouldn't be very high. I just want to point out the dogs have to be registered, though. Chip, we could require the chickens to be registered. We'll the board of registrators as far as we take Maybe. care of it. Names. <laughs> Chicken <laughs> lessons. No, I was going to say, I, I, I agree. I think I, for one, I feel that um, registering the, if you're going to have five or six chickens, which I think it feels, five or six feels to me better, a better number than 12. It just feels like a big jump from 3 to 12. And trying in my head the number of eggs that that's going to produce and the, number, the amount of space that's going to be required. I would be in favor of um, um, limiting the number of coops per lot. Mm -hmm. You know, one per lot. You know, and maybe five or six chickens per coop. And maybe follow the guidelines of, of Amherst and East Hampton over 15,000 square feet by brand. Um, and just register. If you're going to have five or six chickens, just register. It's, it's not a big, burdensome, you know, administrative task. Just let us just <coughs> know who's out there and where, where they're at. Um, um, I think that would be a, an incremental step. And if we go from three to five or six, and we step back and two or three years go by and everybody's happy, and the pro-chicken people are, are clamoring for more chickens, and then maybe we address it again. But I don't, I don't, I don't see the groundswell of we need 12 chickens. You know, three's not enough. We need four times that. I don't, I don't, I don't feel that need, and it just seems like enough. Yeah. Can I pitch to you eight for a reason of like if you're going to eat them, then four or five doesn't get you very far. Two weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. So. That there, there are situations where they're not just egg layers, they're, they're for meat. No, no, I and I think that um, 
once you set that number and people um, build the unit scaled for that number that right. they can have, then we have influenced. They're not going to go in a Cooper Innovation Project and put on two more right. right. you know. So right. we are we are in some way setting the number. I mean, it sounds soft and easy to not do it, but I, right. I, I've kind of been thinking in my mind we ought to go towards more. I, I really do think three is too few because it isn't worth the trouble almost. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't solve if you wanted to eat them, if you were raising them not for eggs. But I think 12 sounds sounds a little too many to me too. I agree right. with you there. But I was thinking eight. That was, and, and it is an arbitrary number. There's just no That's other way to say it. Right. Yeah, I, I'm happier with six than eight. But, but you know, you could always have a coop size for six and then if we decide to allow them all just change it to two coops size for six. People don't have to renovate the coop, they can just build another one. Mm -hmm. well, I know there's a problem with the home back There's yeah. the issue of whether we want to do it per parcel, like Amherst right. does it. But, uh, yeah, but we could go to two coops per lot. I'm, I'm in favor of with Mark. I'm, I'm Mark I, I like the favor of just one coop per lot. Um, and I guess there's room in that discussion for whether we allow a coop to be larger based on the number of residences in that, in that lot. And you could conceivably have you know, three families who each want to have their six chickens, so should you allow one coop for 18? This is, we can get really complicated. No, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. size, but they do have restriction. I mean, basically, there are no restrictions on certain districts, and then there are certain districts in which they have a maximum of 12. And so, so it's East Hampton. A, a minimum of 10 square feet per open area for an adult animal within, um, it goes on to say, at least two square feet inside the... Right, but it's not a set lot size requirement. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. But East Hampton did have a, a cutoff. Um, Devin, you sound like you're a chicken expert. <laughs> I mean, I was just wondering what the life's um, reproductive cycle is because you could have somebody order six chicks and they, how soon would they be reproducing where six would turn into? They don't reproduce without orders. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they're not going to be explain that to you. Everybody brings fertilized. Okay, we have to order fertilized eggs. If you get them this size, it's three or four months before they're laying. But some letter that we got said, you don't really know whether they're males or females. When they're it can be chicks. hard to tell if you get them that and size. And so some of them are going to be roosters, and some of them could potentially produce fertilized eggs. Um, if, well, if they're roosters, we would assume that you get rid of them. Yeah, you yeah, eat their roosters. Yeah. Well, or set them whatever you know. Go farm. Yeah. Eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roosters are the way they farm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, Carol, the first time I spoke with, said, you know, there was a, we, we got a couple of really bad batches of chicks last year, and a lot of them were missexed, and we had, I had a little trouble there, but... They so, were all roosters? No, they just were roosters when people weren't expecting them, because you can't tell them when they get to be teenagers. Um, the other, there were, we did get some emails from other chicken supporters, along with, there was about one email from the person who was um, concerned about it, but in particular, there was a, um, uh, a letter from Lily Lombard that she asked to be read into the record, so if you want me to do that. Sure. Um, to, let me just find it. <laughs> um, sorry about that. While you're doing that, Kai, uh, the other letter was from... John Galvin. Oh. I thought he raised some great points. Um, yeah, but I did particularly ask the Spanish person if there were trouble with rooms, and she said no, that she hadn't had any trouble with that. Um, the yeah. Well, I mean, if you're keeping your feed on, yeah, yeah that, that would be a problem there. It's not yeah. so much the bird. I'm just going to try. I mean, it, that's been a problem with the neighbors of mine, our friends of mine down in Hartford. Actually, I think it was last year I read of an apartment building in Holyoke where they were keeping it in the apartment. So. Tanya, do you want to do the letter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Northampton, which is to express its support.
support for the revised ordinance by keeping foul and Northampton. We have participated in and witnessed the extensive public input that has gone into drafting the ordinance and our support of voters' efforts to make backyard chicken owning more accessible and viable for Northampton residents. While offering guidelines that maintain public health and positive community relations. Sincerely, Lily Omar. Mark, I think you have something. Well, I was just going to say, I, and I, don't, I haven't heard any um, objections, I don't think, in general, to people on the board about even increasing the number or, you know, what Grow Food Northampton is advocating. Um, and I'm in one, I'm in favor of, of an incremental increase. Um, but my question is, should we regulate it? I think we should make this as easy as possible, as non-threatening from the administrative level as possible. But if we're going to go to that extent and say you need to be four feet from a boundary, 20 feet from a, from a residence, should we say if Chickens for Dummies says you need three feet per chicken and we're going to say you can have five or six chickens or whatever the number is, should we mandate what the coop is going to look like? Yeah. They went, well, that was discussed at the Zoning Revisions Committee and it was really <laughs> overly complicated. I mean, yeah. that I think it felt like it was just too much for, for zoning people. I mean, chickens for dummy is a guideline for people, how, you know, how to raise animals properly. And if you can't do it, and you're not going to do the research and figure out what's appropriate, then maybe you shouldn't be raising chickens. And so I think, and the number might change. Maybe research comes in five years and says, oh no, you need three and a half feet. And so I think the zoning, the, for the zoning to get into that level of detail about how to care for chickens is probably not the right location for it, is what I would say. Okay. Uh, I think the inadequate consideration has been given the unintended consequences. Uh, we have to decide whether it's a family, a living unit, or a lot, or if there's unrelated uh, people living together, is that is the same as a family? The question about selling eggs, there's no limitation by the current zoning or by lot size. Uh, there's a rush to simplify things, and I don't think we should dumb down the laws too much. It's also a rush to allow things by right when I think that some things should be considered by special permit. We've only heard from chicken enthusiasts, and I think we need to allow time to hear from opponents. That's it. But I, I'm not prepared to vote in favor of, of, uh, of this. And I, I would also favor a limit of six if it came to that. Are we voting tonight? Is that what we um, I think that we don't have to. I mean, I think we need to decide sort of whether we want to move it or not move it, or to get in another direction, and get more information. Uh, and my only point, and I've sort of made it before, is that what I hear from Carolyn is that there has been a minimum of complaints right now, and maybe because people are trying to be good neighbors, but. Given that, and given that this ordinance is actually going to cut off access for, I think, a great deal of the city, I don't, I, I, I could never, I can't vote for this reform because in my neighborhood, Ward 3, I don't think anyone gets to have chickens. And my neighbors, I don't have any interest in chickens, but my neighbors had them and it wasn't a problem. And so I think that, you know, these are maybe ideal conditions that they're that far apart, and I don't think you could have 12 chickens that close in, but... You know, I think there's a number you could have, and if we're at, for, if what we're trying to advocate is for, for folks to live more sustainably and to be able to have gardens and eggs and chickens close by, that has to apply to all of Northampton and not just to the bigger lot sizes. So that's my suggestion. I want to revisit the why we can't have someone go bless the arrangement that comes in. I mean, you know, Carol is one person in Amherst and she goes around and she hasn't had any trouble taking care of all the animal issues there. So I realize that nobody on the city side really wants that to happen, but I mean, that seems to me to be the way you can make sure that it's being done okay. That, you know, that the size of what's being put on that lot, it, you know, that it, it is for the, first off, that it matches the dimensionality that we want, and second, that it, you know, it would allow for the Ward 3 smaller lot to have a, have something reasonable for that lot. You know, like maybe they keep their three chickens, that's fine. They, they, don't, they don't put 12 there because they wouldn't have the right space for 12. So is that, I mean... It's, 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 
nature. And, you know, we don't, you know, we require people to clear their own snow in front of their homes, and we're not enforcing that. That would, that would be higher. Less. So I think the practical matter, it would only work if the fees were high enough to cover the cost and then start having some substantial fees. All right. Well, um, we, we have an animal control person. Is that a full-time position? Is that a, what is that person? You know, it's still a resource. We, you know, we contract for yeah, it. Is that under the right. Board of Health, or, or is that a separate the animal control? I just looked it up on the website. I think she's contracted by the police, but I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah, my dealing with the dwindling resources, this is not where I would vote to put additional resources. Okay. Just my thought. But my only thought with that is that I think if you require them to register the fact that they have a coup, there's no enforcement of the size of somebody coming knocking on the door looking at what where it is and how big it is. But there's a certain amount of accountability that if you're going to do it, and, and then we, at least we know about it. And we know you're out there. So if there's an issue down the line, yeah. we can look at it and say, that's right, they've got six chickens or whatever. Well, I have to say that um, I, it's a fascinating issue. I raised in Los Angeles. I know nothing about chickens. And, um, but just reading the letters that we got, I can see it's a very complicated issue. So I think in no way, shape, or form am I ready to form any sort of thing tonight. So I'd like to have like the great chicken debate or something because um, I think it's I think it's pretty complicated and it could be pretty problematic. Um, and it, it, it is a new day, and you know when we talk about sustainability, I do consider that, but I just want to do it right, and I think I agree with them. Somebody has to own it um, if we're going to do it. So I'm not ready to, I'd like to have more discussion on it. I tend to agree with Smaller and some of the points that Brandy brought up. So <coughs> what does that look like, though? So this is the second discussion that this board has had. CRC has brought it to us in its current form. Um, what would be the next step? I mean, how it's the first public discussion we had one prior discussion was it on the it was on the it had to have been it was on, on the, the agenda, agenda but there wasn't any special sort of outreach to right and there was the article of anybody right there was the article in the paper for this um, no we did a pretty wide distribution email distribution did the crc have open meetings about this i don't know oh. there are open meetings but you know okay. not many people showed up i mean um, it was video things like it is tonight, but you know, for the most part, we didn't have a lot of people come to the committee level meeting. Mm -hmm. I think Brandy's outlined the, the issues as I as I heard heard them and, and, and read them. Mark? Okay, I, I made my position relatively clear, but if this is the first public forum, well, I really don't have an issue and. and with it in general, this is the first public forum, and this is all the input that we have. Then I wouldn't be ready to vote just based on that. But I would think if we have another one, last chicken debate, you know, if <laughs> can't then come one, come off, <coughs> then maybe it's not as big of a deal as, as we right. thought. And then, you know, I don't, I don't know that my position will change unless I hear more from the public. Um, but if this is all there is, then I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be ready to vote. I want to put things in perspective on um, three chickens. And uh, my court and my learning colleague, they, they about give about two thirds. A chicken gives about two thirds of an egg a day. Depends what kind they are. Okay, so three chickens um, would give two eggs a day. That's fourteen a week. Okay, I don't know how many eggs you go through, but that's over a dozen a week. Eight chickens would be over three dozen eggs a week. What are you going to do with all those eggs? No. Three thousand? Uh, three, three dozen. Eggs. Oh, three. Sorry. Okay. Three dozen. <laughs> and six eggs a day, even six eggs a day, would give 28 eggs per week. Well, and it's, I gave you the answer that's in the book. But I mean, you realize it. Uh, you break so. Catherine, well, <laughs> Catherine <laughs> asked about their life cycle. I mean, if you're going to build a coop, you know, they only lay for three or four years. So then you've got to bring in them. I'm all for it, obviously, and I don't think it's it's a, a big stretch. I think you've looked around at the other communities. You've got Amherst that's doing 
doing it with 12 and not having any trouble. You've got East Hampton. Um, and, and I haven't heard a big problem coming out of the public, so I'm taking it different than you are. I'm thinking if it were a big issue, we would have to it. But I think we ought to do it in a very responsible way. And I, I, that's where I think it just needs more detail than what we've, what we've said about it. So would you propose putting in some sort of registration process, which is what Mark's talked about, that, that's missing here? ahead of time whether or not that's even appropriate as opposed to just dumping it into special permit. Um, I think that, um, you know, to some degree, maybe people would have to work it out. If there are chickens that are already in your apartment building, then you know, maybe you have to wait. <laughs> I, I don't have an issue with the way it's structured right now, 4 yeah. feet and 20 feet. That makes, physically, that makes sense to me because the coop takes space. But it, it, it smells. But it seems like there might be an instance where Hey, I live in Ward 3, my neighbors are all for it, my lot lends itself to having a, a coop, all I want are three chickens, it's only going to take this much space, but technically I can't conform to these, can I apply for special permit? And then at least we can say, oh, you know what, it's really not going to work. <coughs> or, and I think just, just by that process, nobody's going to, just because it is a process, nobody's going to take it lightly, and that if they really feel that they should and, 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 and could have chickens in their Ward 3 small lot and really want to apply for a special permit, why not let them? Well, I think that would get in the neighborhood opinion, too. Well, yeah, then would you, you probably want to set some parameters about what, how you get your special permit. I mean, why would the zoning board design it, for example, if you had adequate lot space and... and well, if you had adequate lot space, it wouldn't be an issue. If, you know, if you can meet well, the, not if you do it by lot and then have a, you know, if you say anything under 10,000 gets six chickens or whatever, and it's done by lot, if someone in that unit already has six. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so if you're doing both, um, sort of number by lot and then having a minimum lot size. All right. The thing about that, though, is you're putting a restriction, you're making people go for a site plan that now don't have to do that at all. So you're actually taking away significant rights well, that I'm people thinking have of now. People who can't do it, I'm thinking of, who's, who live on a lot right. that wouldn't allow them to have any chickens. But currently, there are no lot restrictions. Right. Anyone can right. have three. So right. if we pass this as it stands now, we would be taking away You're the right. rights of an awful lot of people who probably currently have chickens or may have chickens or could have. Right. 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 Right.
mean, that's another way you can look at it. Is if you want to have three, there's no yeah, there's no setbacks. You can go beyond three, right. then that's you're the same. Only yeah. because that's what's in place now, and what I'm yeah. hearing is there's a minimal amount of complaints. So there's some indication that it's not a problem. That doesn't so they leave it that way for now with the three chickens, and this applies to lots that are larger because they can have a larger. So three by right, three to six or whatever <coughs> kind of numbers that we come up with, you need to be four feet and 20 feet and it's by a lot and everything else we talked about, something like that. I was actually thinking <coughs> if you had less than, if you had three or fewer chickens, it was not, the, the dimensionality didn't matter. Right, right, like right, 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 right. Now. right, right. Okay. But then between three and eight, right. you would be by a lot of right. And then if you were in a very, something much larger, you just could have any number of chickens you want? No. Oh, well, I mean, if your lot size, like East Hampton Air, is about four feet, it's by right. So you yeah. can say you have up to three by right, or over 15,000 square feet by right. But three to eight, you need to conform. Don't, don't forget, eight chickens get 37 acres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an absurdly high number. <laughs> well, it sounds Six like some people number. are not ready to move it forward tonight. So do we want... A, you're shaking your I'm not ready. You're not ready. Marilyn, you're not ready. Brandy, I'm ready you're to not vote ready. against it. You're ready to vote against it. Um, I'm not ready. I'm going to vote for it, but I want to hear more from the public in terms of specific words of this detailed right. stuff. So then I'm going to propose then that we have a public forum on chickens, like you're saying that out loud. Um, because we all, I think nobody feels complete. Well, some, I think Devin, you feel ready to vote tonight. <coughs> I would vote, but I would put some more specific language. Right, right. And it can't, I mean, it sounds like yeah, we all feel like Yeah, I think it needs like different language. Well, alternatively, you could, you know, we could, I could work on it and bring something different back based on your conversation, and then you could decide yeah. what you want. Yeah, I, I, that okay. would be a good idea. And then hear, to hear more, you know, and then I think. Outreach to the public. So yeah. Although I really do feel it, I mean, because that gave us a nice story. And I know <laughs> nobody's talking about ducks. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. Not one word about ducks. No, I'm all for the ducks. My neighbors used to have ducks. I love the ducks. I was going to say, so a current landlord's pet policy would cover chickens? Yeah. Oh, I think a no animal. I mean, I think there are a ton of leases that just say no, no animals pets. or no pets. Yeah. yeah so. I feel like that's or if they my, allow my experience allow. with leases. It's less of a problem because there's just right. the vast majority have that restriction anyway. You're not going to allow a cat. Yeah. It's a boilerplate lease, right? Yeah. 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 Chickens, but no cats. Is that right? right? That seems that seems unlikely, doesn't it? Yes. Chickens are fine, but your kitty cat is not. If you have chickens, you need cats to control the rodents. Right? <laughs> so we're going to ask Carolyn kindly offer to <laughs> do some revisions for us. We can do the same a type of publicity again. I don't know if we'll score another article in the Gazette. Um, right. But we can put it out to the different wards um, to grow food, to you know, be sort of obviously interested parties. Yep. Is there anything scheduled for the second meeting in March? March? <laughs> <laughs> no, there is not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't see this as And there's nothing scheduled for the second meeting in December either. Or well, November for that matter, probably. <coughs> Does that sound workable to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, you need a motion to. I need a motion, Brandy. But we need a date. We need a date, Karen. Well, how about if I just tell you it's ready and then you can figure it out? I'll put it on an agenda. <laughs> Sounds good. Right, we don't actually need a motion because we're not no. actually going to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. December. Is weatherproofing an issue, um, Devin? Do chickens live happily through the cold? Is not happily, no. So and usually for a year or light in, in this climate. Or I can't come to it now. All right. Another few years. You want to do it? Yes. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We need chicken. All right. Back to home businesses. Go. Discussion? Frankly, I have the same objections to the home business without the chickens. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that. I agree. <coughs> uh, 
I think that there's been inadequate consideration given the unintended consequences. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's pretty complicated. I don't I can't get all that enthusiastic about it. How did it get this far with the whole focus on the number of trips if there's no way to enforce that? I mean, if that's just off the table because it's not realistic. I don't understand how we're being given something like this at this point that can't be done. Talk to your ZRC members. <laughs> well, I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion. That was one of the biggest comments at one of the forums. I don't know if it was in Florence or at Bridge Street, but um, you know, which is where the language came to say you have to register with the building commissioner and say, here's my home business and here's what here's what I'm intending to do, here are my hours of operation and so to be evaluated to sort of to the extent you could truth whether or not um, the operation was going to fit within the parameters allowed by right or if it really would be a special <coughs> permit. Um, I think the um, there was some, I think for the most part, the, the, um, it was written that way because they felt, the members who worked on it felt really strongly that traffic impacts were important and that, you know, that should be some mechanism <coughs> to be able to address it and that um, the other piece of it is to a certain extent even um, there is some neighborhood enforcement aspect of any zoning now, you know, any violation, I should say. Right. And so there is, it was a discussion about whether this would be any different from the existing conditions. Um, you know, I think the building commissioner feels like with this and the chickens, it probably will be a difficult enforcement. Um, but he's willing to sort of, he was willing to work with it and figure out this sort of registration system as a better way to sort of get ahead of it, kind of like what you said, Mark, about if you're on the books and you're saying you're doing X, and if a neighbor calls and says, I think something's going on here, there were so many trips, then there's something to fall back on to right. to say, hey, um, you know, your registration says that you're only going to be doing this amount, what's going on? Um, so I think that probably gave a little bit more comfort to the zoning committee members. I, I have to say that every complaint I've ever heard about home businesses about traffic, mm -hmm. and I think that's I think that's really the key thing to focus on in in, the, in any kind of um, ordinances actually limiting what everybody's concerned about. So. But Enforcement is another issue, but you know yeah. the the the, tra the trips and the parking and is, the parking, is what's, yeah. what people care about. I mean, I think Carolyn's right. Enforcement's always the issue. I mean, with any permit we put any kind of conditions on, how do you ever know that any is ever compliant? It's all it's all reporting and enforcement. I don't think I don't see this as any different. It is open-ended in terms of what the uses. Carolyn gave the example of the music studio, the music lessons, um, which I like because that's actually been controversial in the past. But that's the sort of thing you know. If there's only one person. <coughs> And they see an average of a client an hour. You know, I'd rather say let's allow the person to to teach lessons in their home, ignore the number of trips. But it's going to self it's going to self regulate, uh, and that's more enforceable. So you can sort of expand the list of what kind of businesses are allowed to, to take place. That seems really detailed. That's sort of I mean, it's been their approach for a long time. Right now, we have a clear list of what's allowed by right, what's allowed by special permit, what's not allowed. I mean, music lessons, not unlike soccer. You could take your kid to the music lesson, go and back. shopping, and then come back That's and there's more trips. You yeah. know, so that could be, you know, not a thirty-minute lessons, or you know. Well, my luck would be drum lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's traffic and parking, and I mean, I'm just envisioning four three like in those neighborhoods. <laughs> The problem with parking already. And, uh, I tend to think too that if parking is really bad already, a home business isn't going to be able to successfully operate anyway because there'll be nobody for customers to park. So there's a certain amount of self-regulation there. It's not like 
there's going to be a lot of parking and then it'll be filled up with these business people, all of these clients, and other people want to be able to park. I mean, parking is really tough. Yeah, it might get a little tougher, but it's, you know, if it's impossible, it's going to stay impossible. And the business isn't going to operate it because it's not going to have any parking. So, I, I'm not, personally, I'm not tremendously concerned about it, but I just get down to, to reasonable levels. And people can park a little distance away more. Well, it's, it's not that bad for them. Or bike. There is a big difference between what area and town it is, though. Yeah. Wright Avenue or Fruit Street is full of cars there, you know, bumper to bumper every day, every business day. A place like Stearns Court doesn't have anybody parking on it right now. Is there a whole business that would change that drastically? But not by much if we kept them under What, what drove, at the very beginning, what drove the need <coughs> for this regulation? I mean, the home businesses are operating... You mean years ago when we started this? No, now to, to kind of clean it up and make it legitimate. It, yeah. Well, I mean, I think part of it was sort of going through the list of things coming out of sustainable Northampton. We wanted to allow more flexibility for businesses. I think the concept of people not having to drive to go to work. Um, now, with the economy down, it seems like the... the um, pressure is a little bit greater to try to address that so that people don't have to spend a lot of money to, to generate income for themselves. Um, and frankly, it, I think it was thought to be sort of an easy thing because all along, I, I don't know, let's say a handful, maybe two handfuls of people come in for special permit every year to the zoning board. And <laughs> mostly they're not really controversial. Sometimes there's some questions and some stipulations that have to be addressed, but um, it seems that that process <coughs> is, creates a burden that in the end is not really <coughs> much, and it's a pretty innocuous thing that someone wants to do. So I think the idea was really to, you know, lift up the, um, the, the line a bit and allow people to come in without really needing to go through that process as much. I mean, we did one amendment just recently to try to reduce the burden, and that was not requiring them to come back after a year through the whole process. You guys might remember that. And I think that's been a relief to a couple people who had just, you know, gone through the process. Um, and this is, you know, like Wayne said, we've done some incremental changes over the years, and so this was sort of thought to be another incremental step. Maybe, again, it's a too big of a step and it needs to be ratcheted down, but the idea was really to make it um, friendlier and for people to maybe not have to drive off to work every day if they could figure out a way to work from home. I know one person on the committee was you know, thinking that, of course, we're going to have a bunch of startups here and we're going to be the next biggest invention that comes out of Northampton, but you can only do that if you've got, you know, four college kids <laughs> in a house, a working away in a garage, <laughs> right, trying to right. create that, That's and cool. our ordinance wouldn't allow it. It would require you to go for a special permit um, for something like that to happen. Yes? Uh, I would like to propose that a resident of telecommutes does not, not be considered a home business. So somebody that now works at home two or three days a week shouldn't be considered a home business because there's no traffic generated. It doesn't, right? No. Well, I've been, some people have suggested that, that there would be. Well, it's, a home it's, a home office. Office. it's a home office for July, right? Yeah. Okay. But I think that was the other sort of evaluation. <laughs> right, well, well, that's I the other question is, be. Well, that's nothing. I mean, why why is that even a free? Why is that even up for discussion? And that's such a low threshold to say, oh, you're fine if you're just by yourself. Of course, I'm fine. It's my own house. Why can't I do that? <laughs> so, what do people want to do with us? Well, I was just gonna say, I think when when the ZRC was formed, I think their charge, and once they got into it, saw how daunting everything was gonna be, was to pick off some kind of low hanging fruit. And this is one of those. <coughs> But now that you're into it, we get to the point where we actually have to define and, and put some numbers out there. And I, I really don't have an issue with it, and, and I, I think in, in the general sense, and I think as far as 
um, enforcement, I liken it to, you know, shelter the sidewalk. We don't, there's no enforcement, but the neighborhood kind of self-enforces that. And, and I think that would apply here, but we need to, to establish limits. And with, with condominium associations, I think they can limit, they can, they can allow it or not allow it. Multi-families, uh, landlord, tenant, same situation, they can, I, I think that could and should be kind of a self-governing thing. But on a broader sense, we should establish limits. And whether these numbers, seven a day, 25 a week, are those the right numbers? Five and 20, I'm not sure. Um, again, it seems less as we get 30 out there at one point, now it's 25. It, it feels okay to me, but I don't know. Um, I think we need to, to start somewhere. And I, I don't think if we pass this, that all of a sudden there's, there's going to be, you know, all these at-home businesses that are generating traffic. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm generally for it, and I'm, I'm okay with the way it's written. I mean, we've reviewed it a few times internally, and I'm okay right now with the way it's written. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Mark. I mean, the numbers are, yeah, they're a little plucked out of the air in a sense, but they feel good to me, they feel reasonable, um, large enough to make it doable, but not so large as to really negatively impact the neighborhood. I'm, I'm ready, personally, I'm ready to vote on this as it stands. My, my version of it has referred both to an average of 30 vehicle round trips and to a weekly average of 25. So Are you sure the 30 is not crossed out? Not in my version. No, it's crossed out in my version. Yeah. No, yours is crossed yeah. out. Maybe it just didn't show up on your... It's 25, oh, right? Yeah. It's 25, but again, it's... Right, you know, it's whatever you... <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, other folks, how are other folks feeling about moving it forward, getting more information? No, we need to move forward. Yeah. How about public comment? We did public comment. Is there any more? We didn't close the public comment. Here. No. Well, it's not a public hearing either, so you could go back. So just do you, we have one other person walking in. Well, Ms. Schwartzberg now. walked in and then after the other comment. Sure. Come on up. Oh, thank you. You can just take your name and your address for the record. Okay, Fran Schwartzberg <coughs> at 45 Roselle. And I wrote a letter that Carolyn may have forwarded to you. I think the concern is some of us do live on crowded streets, as Marilyn alluded to, where there may be only a few cars at the street at a given hour, and all of a sudden everybody comes home and there's no space, and you need a few blank spaces for the postal carrier and the oil delivery people and the FedEx that goes up and down the street for the few existing home businesses. But other times it's very crowded and we do actually get trapped in our own driveways. A lot of people on my street have driveways where you might share it with a neighbor in the beginning. It is a single driveway in the beginning but it's more parking in the back and you get trapped in your own driveway by either your tenants or your neighbors or a delivery person. And there's parking only allowed on one side of the street. So it gets to be safety issues. We have, I think, 25 buildings on our street, eight of those I believe are multifamily, so you have at least 36 units or so parking on one side of the street and a lot of cars and a lot of people who live there also park on the street because they box themselves in in their own driveway. So there's certain times of the day there's not a whole lot of uh, room. And a small dead end street, if you think, okay, if 10 people want to do this, all of a sudden you have <coughs> maybe 250 cars a week. You have, there's no sort of consideration of the impact of multiple people having small businesses. It's one thing to have 30 round trips a week on your street, that doesn't seem like much, but if a number of people do it, you have greater parking issues and greater traffic issues. I'm a little bit less concerned with traffic, but really in our street, there, people do get stuck, delivery trucks get stuck, cars get stuck, and I know I have had, I have own a two family, I've had pr prospective tenants over the years who wanted to have home businesses and they're often very interesting businesses. One was the equivalent of primal screen therapy, I had to say I really didn't think I could tolerate it. You know, other people wanted to move in, wanted to practice with bands, bands that I love their music, but I really didn't want to hear it in, you know, my own home and have to live with it. So. I, I, you know, appreciate the comments about discretion, you know, if you're own property, maybe then it is our choice. It's, it's an additional expense. I do think 
it, we have to be careful with an ordinance like this that it may give the impression that people have a right to do it by right. And if it's a rental property, your costs do go up quite a bit um, in terms of your property tax insurance. I called my insurance and I said, what if this went through and I had to allow people to have businesses? I said, what's the impact on my insurance? They said, well, insurance might possibly double. And I pay $1,300 a year almost in insurance. So paying $2,600 almost in insurance, that's a leap. And I could pass those costs on, but not in the middle of a lease. So I think traffic and particularly parking is my main concern. And the lack of consideration for the impact on a street or a neighborhood on a case-by-case -case basis because if you have a lot of home businesses then you have a far greater impact and when you have a special permit process or an interim permitting process or registration process what have you at least you can consider all right there's already 10 businesses and maybe there isn't room for one more so you know that that's a problem um, you're not considering the overall impact um, in this so there's no individual consideration like you have a special permit, which is, I realize, a burden on the city. Special permit is set in stone by state law in terms of the days of um, by which you have to make decisions and so forth. So <coughs> maybe some interim easier process that considers the needs of neighborhoods <coughs> would be an idea. And the chickens, I did start to research out a little bit. I do know some chicken owners, and that is a more complex issue. I could, I could give you some potential draft language, but my research has only begun. But this impacts me a little bit more directly. I don't know, Wayne. We lived on the same street. I don't know <laughs> what you think about more cars on Ravel, but um, I think it, it could have a substantial impact on some crowded streets. Thank you. Can I just, can I just make one final clarification? Because I think that I'm right that this does not in any way um, restrict a homeowner from putting a restriction in a lease that says that tenants may not have home businesses. Okay. And I think that's worth including actually in the language because it, you know, it can give rise to um, conflicts that might otherwise not need to be there. Well, two points. I think the use of special, one of the things that the use of special permit does is that it allows the public to come in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody comes before a special permit butters have to be notified, etc. And then they have the opportunity to say how that would affect their particular neighborhood. Uh, if it's by right, they don't. Um, the other thing is that I know that in crowded city streets, um, we're very, uh, we do not enforce the distance between somebody's driveway and where they should be parked so that people park right up. I, I've seen it all over, particularly Ward 3 right up to next to people's driveway so it makes it hard and unsafe for people to get out. I just think the parking it would make parking very difficult in some of our city streets. Maybe not all, but some. Carolyn, is there some slightly less onerous process people could go through um, than site plan, like something at ZRC? I'm not trying to pawn it off, but just something that is not you know, that allows the public to be heard, allows butters to come in, but isn't quite as rigorous as what's currently in place? Well, no, I mean, it wouldn't <coughs> do that with the butters. I think what you could do is do sort of an administrative review, either, I mean, the, the language proposed has a registration process, but it doesn't say, you know, I suppose you could outline some parameters where through that registration process, if it's deemed that the street already has it doesn't have capacity for another one unless a special permit's granted, but you'd have to kind of figure out the language ahead of time and put that specifically in the jurisdiction for the administrative review process. <coughs> um, but it wouldn't be, that that would be an administrative review, so it's not going to be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So the, other, the other thing I think you, you're going to see if parking becomes a problem is residents uh, going for resident home parking. They're going to request that more. And I, I think as a city, we have been sort of not in favor of resident-only parking. I know we, there's one place where we do, but in general, I don't think we favor it. I think one uh, Yeah, I, I mean, if parking's such an issue, why don't we just ban home businesses entirely? I mean, free up parking for people. 
Yes. <laughs> no, actually, it's quite, uh, uh, if, if that's, you can, if, if people are entirely, perfectly happy with the existing situation, we shouldn't change it. If parking is a problem, we should change it and get rid of home businesses to improve the parking. If parking is not a problem and people um, are fine with it, then we should allow this. But it seems to me that people aren't perfectly happy with it and the parking is a problem, so that the public input seems to be pushing towards banning home businesses because of parking rather than expanding them, if, if that's what we want to do. You, you could have an interim thing where people submit a plan for parking, and it could incorporate things that you mentioned, such as they have an arrangement with someone on the next street who has a big parking lot who says people can park here. I think if you had people had to submit a plan for parking, if everybody in the neighborhood is walking to the business, it's not an issue. That's my concern. If you have a plan for parking, it may be there's somebody on that street who has a big enough lot and they want to make a couple bucks and people have to pay a dollar to pay there, that takes care of the issue. I think if you have a plan, you don't need to either ban it or make it too onerous, but I think it needs to be addressed and that could be incorporated, that a plan needs to be submitted demonstrating adequate parking or the lack of a need for it. So that would be possibly one considered one way. Carolyn, do you know in, in surrounding towns where they, uh, are there any limitations on home business such as only so many per, per block or whatever, per X amount of square feet? Or I haven't done enough looking around. And sometimes it depends on who you are, who you are. <laughs> um, I won't mention names. Um, but, you know, so I'm sure it varies. I don't know if this is the case. I've also heard in one of the surrounding towns allows people to start a home business and then apply a year later to see sort of what the impact of that. I don't know if that's still in effect or not or what the, you know, usefulness of that is. Well, just from reading the paper, I constantly that it's one of the responses to unemployment. We have this enormous unemployment problem and that people give up looking for jobs and they figure what can I make or do or offer at home. So I would think that if the unemployment stays high that we're going to get quite a number of either by right or requests for review. Do you guys are also talking about traffic and Generally, all businesses generate less traffic than the person who has a car driving to work. They generate fewer for traffic patterns. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so it, it seems what Andrew was saying, kind of following along with lines. If you live on a street that has horrific parking to begin with, but you're eager to start a home business, well, maybe where you live doesn't lend itself to that particular kind of parking, or maybe you have to make an arrangement with the person behind you who has a big parking lot. And so it, it kind of is a self-governing thing. And so I don't think just because it's by right that everybody all of a sudden there's going to be cars jamming in and parking where it, it didn't exist before. It's not going to automatically exist now that there's a home business. Um, so I, I, I think there's, there would be more self-governing than we're giving it credit for. Um, I want to vote on it. I'm ready to vote. I have a question. Uh, if, has anybody done any research on whether insurance companies consider home businesses commercial activities or not? So they might not. My, my insurance company said it depends what's happening and, and you know, there might be different levels. Because I looked at my policy, it says, is there any commercial activity, is there any commercial activity within, also a separate question, within 300 feet? So. It depends what it is. Yeah, it they, depends, what they, depends on the definition of commercial life. What type of activity? The, that's the decision of the person. <coughs> so that's their concern. What? Well, how is this relevant to the conversation? Uh, the, if your neighbor has a whole business, uh -huh. or if then you're in a duplex and your neighbor starts a whole business, or if you're within 300 feet, if somebody starts a whole business, does that increase your insurance rates by double? We have anecdotal evidence of that. Depends. But is that really a problem? Is that 
what we're trying to do. Oh, well, yeah. Of course it is. Yeah, it is. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, in a, in a tight neighborhood, your, your neighbor is 10 feet away. How could that, when another homeowner is doing on their property, affect your insurance rates? Because they look at what happens within 300 feet. I mean, that's a question on your insurance policy. If you so own how far you are from the fire? Yeah. I have to be honest, it's not a question on my own. Do you have a garage? Policy. Yeah. I have another question. In central business, is it, if there's a conflict, I mean, do you need a home business um, license or whatever in, a, in central business? Does this limit you more in central business than you would be otherwise? You know, because you would look at what, whether the use is allowed. Medical use, for instance, is allowed, so you wouldn't follow the home business piece of it. It might, it, there might be a building code issue where you need to have, you know, a no, I'm just in it. Because this is much more restrictive than central business code. Oh yeah, I mean it's meant to because it's really about the residential districts. Right, but it doesn't. It, all, it applies to all zones, so. <coughs> it would seem to me both these and the chicken laws should take some into account some of the zoning, current zoning too, because it you know it affects what people expect out of that zone. Do the folks that are interested in moving it forward want to make a motion or propose any language changes to make a motion or? So let me let me get this straight. So um, our choice is to move it forward by us sponsoring an ordinance, correct? So we're, the vote is for us to sponsor an ordinance to go to city council that we vote that out. Could be, yeah. To be. I think isn't that right? I mean, I don't know if it's a formal vote so much as a yeah. A I mean, you could you could do what you did with the other one and say, well, we'd like to have a little bit more work on X, Y, and Z areas, or if people are ready to vote as the language as is, whether to vote it up or down, saying yes, it should move forward as an ordinance, or move forward with these adjustments, or dump it. <laughs> you know. Is that clarifying? Yeah, I just want to make sure that the public understood that our vote isn't to final, make this right. correct. Yeah, it's final. Final. Yeah. it's oh, not even Most close. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. We're just a few people. Just a quick clarification. The ordinance has written home business law by right, but do they register? Do they have to at least register, or if it's not, that's not required? Well, the new language then would say there's sort of, um, I guess, three threshold, the one where if it's just you, mm -hmm. you don't, you're not registering as you have your own. Uh, if you want to have um, clients or um, employees and you're only going to have <coughs> that threshold level vehicle trips, you have to register, it's by right, but you just essentially register with the building department to say, here's what I want to do. Right. And then at that point, it can also be evaluated whether or not it really should trip a special permit. And then if you know you want to have more than whatever the minimum threshold is, um, then that would be a special permit. Special. Yeah. So going back to your middle option, what would trip? So you're saying that there could be there could be something that trips that somebody registers and the, who is ever checking the registration says, whoa, this doesn't seem... Are they just going to go, they're going to go back to the ordinance and say, do you meet it or not? Yeah, I mean, it could be, so let's take the music lesson thing, where people know generally that a lot of times um, the person taking the lessons just gets dropped off and then errands get run, and, or if they're holding soccer clinics at their home, they might just drop off. And then, um, so those things, you know, we can look at them and say, hmm, that's probably not mm -hmm. 10 round trips or 7 round trips or whatever. We think that it, because it's a gray area, you oh, know, okay. go up. But you know, you may be saying, "Well, it's really seven because I have seven students at this time." And we'll say, "Well, yeah, but really, what does happen? Mm -hmm. What happens is you come and you go and you come and you go." So there, that inquiry would be made at that yeah. level, at the registration level. Yeah. Okay.
Um, and how many people did you say approximately a year apply for the special permit for this? I mean, it varies. I guess it would, you know, anywhere between five and ten. So it's a small population, then, 30,000 residents. Of the ones we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that is a good point. Yeah. You know. Carolyn, some of those people coming back a second time, which would disappear okay. if it was right? Yeah. Um, right, I mean, well, I'm thinking more of the first time, first time around. Okay. Other questions, comments, or just some, would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, question, Mark? I'll make a motion. Motion? Motion to? Or did Depends you have a question? Depends on the motion. I'll let it out. Okay. I mean, did you have a question or no, a comment? No, no, mine was a motion. I was going to move. Okay. I uh, move to uh, approve the proposed uh, changes to the oh, home business it. ordinance and move it forward. We need to, to close the public hearing. Oh, first. thank you. Is um, that a public hearing? Public hearing. Oh, public hearing. Oh, sorry. It's, it's the second time you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue, Mark. Actually, oh, if you anyway. could start over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I move okay. to uh, approve the proposed changes to the home business ordinance as written and move it forward to City Council for review. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? All right, thank you. On to number three, uh, discussion of future zoning changes, priorities, and model for addressing changes. Are we going to whisk through this panel? Um, so it goes to what? G. <laughs> the letters go to G. Wait, which one? Which table are you on? No, I'm on uh, discussion. I'm on uh, oh, oh, yeah. agenda item three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I would like to point out it's my wedding anniversary tonight. <laughs> I would really like to get out of here. I think we all. Before we get to this. <laughs> Regardless of what the occasion is. Um. Well. I guess the idea was these are the ones that we've sort of talked about and mold about, and, uh, you know, mold over a little bit, and then there's that whole other table that I sent you. Um, so I don't know if you, you know, it would be nice to sort of think about um, <coughs> if you have any thoughts about which ones you think are priorities that you want to work on next. Um, if you want to spend some time doing that now, or if um, uh, yeah. What's our It's not really. I, I just put them. They're not necessarily in order. They're just sort of. Oh yeah, we did this and we did this one. We did this. Are there any easy ones? <laughs> or the whole just business did easy ones. ones. Yeah. 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 Chickens. That was easy. Oh god. Or any emergent ones. And then my other question is, what do we have scheduled for the next hearing? Yeah. <laughs> um, do we see. have King Street on? October 13th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the next. <coughs> okay, so that's not the next. Um, so, you know, I, um, I think we talked a little bit, I mean, I think the zone change, the Florence Grammar zone change will be local hanging fruit. I don't know what you think, Pauline, about that one. Oh, so basically, is that going to be part of the overall institutional zone changes, or you going to do that separately? Oh, you mean they come together at the same time, or that yeah. it's, it's wrapped into the... Uh, it should be at the same time as the other the changes, because they sort of... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's quite a time. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe that's the way to group it, is um, the grammar school plus institutional buildings. And, but I think, I don't know, it seems like that could be potentially a commercial district, or an expansion of an existing commercial district on its own as opposed to a special permit process. Right, but you're saying, I mean, the institutional is not included a change in Hollywood Street. So oh, all it those, did. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so I forgot about that. Yeah. Well. yeah, no, so it makes sense to put that together. And, um, excuse me, I'm, what was the zoning change to Florence Grove? Well, there was, <coughs> um, so the school department has um, still owns the building. There was some discussion for a while about the school maybe reusing it for a school function.
But at this point, <coughs> that's sort of gone by the wayside. And originally, there was a permit granted by the planning board to say you, that nonprofits were okay to take up space in here, rent space. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was, it, it seemed to be sort of almost like an incubate, incubator type of facility. But now it's sort of expanding, and there's some tenants in there that don't fall under the per the guidelines of the original yeah, permit. The classes there. Um, yeah, but it's more that um, they're sort of um, for-profit entities are there now, um, and small businesses again, sort of the, you know, <coughs> but it's not per it's not specifically allowed. It's right next to the general uh, to um, neighborhood business zone that Florence um, Mini Mart or whatever yeah. it's called Mini Mall. And then also it backs up to a special or office industrial zone. So we were thinking to enable more flexibility of the types of uses in there instead of allowing a, a, or creating a special permit process that maybe it makes sense just to wrap it into the existing surrounding zoning. Because um, right now it's zoned residential. Yeah. What's the current zoning again? I'm confused. The current zoning is URB. But it's adjacent to office industrial and well, it's not. Yeah. It's but we're not really not discussing it area. now. We're just discussing what order we address these issues. We're not talking about that oh. right now, are we? Well, we're just sort of talking about how we might organize the next round of discussion. Yeah. So, so we if we lump into that it. into the institutional um, zone, we could bring that to you together. Yeah. You know, that could be part yeah, of that, that package. And if you feel like that makes sense to move forward, we had talked earlier that maybe it could come this fall, and all of a sudden we're in the fall, and so we need to know, you know, I guess if that would, if it makes sense to do that. Cluster's been hanging out there for a really long time with changes, and we think we've sort of addressed some of the cluster ordinance um, items in the water supply protection zone changes. We made substantial um, changes in water supply protection. Um, and the cluster uses within that. So it's almost as though we've taken a step in that direction. So we might be able to, that might be considered low or hanging mm -hmm. fruit. <laughs> um, and, you know, the other, the big, <coughs> the big thing, I mean, we've only been addressing commercial districts for the most part. And I think that it seemed like there was an interest to say, okay, we, well, we've done some commercial, maybe we really need to start thinking about the residential side. So that obviously is a bigger chunk. I would not call that low hanging fruit. And what's driving that? I mean, just because all we've done is business, we should look at residents. Well, yeah, it's just we, everything's sort of in a holding pattern. I mean, constantly, ever since Sustainable Northampton was in play, People are saying, can I do this, can I do that? And it's individuals, homeowners, it's um, developers, it's small builders, it's whatever. When we say, oh, well, the plan says X, Y, and Z, but what the zoning doesn't yet. So you can't do what you want to do. But yet, there's all the support, tech, you know, theoretically, in the policy statement for the plan. So it seems like we need to. Yeah. That's, that's the substantive reason. It's also yeah. just said. Readability of zoning. We've taken this table of use regulations and table of dimensional regulations. You've merged them together for a bunch of districts. Right. So our zoning is a little weird now because it's in transition. We have the, the old kind of tables, the new right. kind of tables. And with the business, we looked at like central business was easier than the others. Are there residential zones that are easier than others that we could attack it in the same manner? No. <laughs> New York City is certainly easier than URA, though. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. New York City is easier than URA, but... Um, but in general, it's not the same animal. Yeah, I mean, I guess the issue, the other piece of that is, I mean, URC may be easier than URA, but there's been a lot of discussion about um, <coughs> playing <coughs> in districts. So if we're going to modify one, we should be addressing other areas too, and not just sort of pick on one district or another. Right. So we don't want we want to avoid that um, issue and try to. Make, I mean, wouldn't you say that? Yeah, I think. I mean, ultimately, I think you're going to the same discussion we've had about chickens. Uh, do you want to do it right and get it done with, or do you want to do it incrementally and make smaller, less controversial changes? Right. Go through and improve it. No, we have to come back. You're saying 12 chickens is right and six chickens is not. 
is. Whatever the number is. My friend was that was in there. I mean, does the order of this really matter? Is one dependent on another? Or can we just kind of put one on the agenda for each of the next seven meetings? Or? Well, no, it doesn't matter. It just matters in that if you want to try to tackle easier ones first and save a big chunk of time for the harder ones, or, you know, the other thing is, to some degree, maybe some of the easier ones are the ones that we've already done um, more work on. So it wouldn't take much more to yeah. get it ready. Because basically what you've been saying is none of them is really easy. But there's some where we made some. Well, sometimes we make erroneous assumptions. <laughs> but none of those, none of these feel more emergent than others, like because other stuff is coming up that might be <coughs> like that's institutional buildings. Well, I think that's probably really prime. Because of everything that's being so dissolved, yeah. right? Well, that's yeah. 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 yeah, I mean that is front and center. I think, and it's yeah. better yeah. to be ahead of the game. Right. Than, yeah. I, yeah, I think so. I when you when you talked about that a couple months ago, that felt important because otherwise you see control completely. So I'd be, I would vote for that. Yeah, I'd say. Florence Grammar Institutional Buildings, maybe do those first to make us feel good about ourselves, and then <laughs> right into that, and then jump into residential. Or yeah. maybe cluster, clusters. You said clusters was we made a lot of progress on. By default, it, it seems it, like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could get cleaned up quickly. But it seems like right. If we're in a transition period instead of running away from it. Let's jump into it and clean it up, and yeah. we did the business end. Let's do the residential. I think in that, and 
that correspondence, they do raise one good point, which is that white pine doesn't actually do a great screening job. It tends to lose its lower branches yeah, as it gets tall and right. right. yeah. yeah. So, whereas, you know, after a few years, it won't. You know, when you put it in at 10 feet, it's a good screening plant, but you know, 20 years later. But spruce no will bush out. out. Spruce? Yeah, spruce will probably bush out more. Yeah. But, I mean, personally, if the issue is just that they can't get them now, why not wait till March? Well, because the neighbors really want to screen in there. Well, and I'd be completely and opposed to arborvitae. Oh, yeah. that's... Yeah. I will, I will personally go out there and chop it down myself yeah. if they plant it. So. I, I think spruce is better than white pine. Uh, I, I think white pine is a terrible choice. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have arborvitae than uh, <laughs> white pine, but uh, how about if we accepted shorter mm. uh, trees that were specified? Uh, they'll grow. Yeah. 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 They'll get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Were you not? I don't think we should yeah. cover yeah. that. What? Were you at the meeting where we discussed all this? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Then you have nothing to say about that. <laughs> I have something to say about white pine. Okay. No, they're really they're, they're no good for screening at all. So it sounds like people are generally feeling like spruce is the way to go. Yeah, did I get that right? Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I think it would be better if we planted a mix of trees, to be honest, rather than just planting all one. So, I Is there another option that's not currently on the list that we can suggest, or we can require? Um, well, we have, a, we have a tree list that could pick. Yeah. Could come back but is it evergreen on that? Are evergreens on that? I don't think they are. I think they're street trees. Because they don't deal with anything trees. off the street. So I think they're all street trees. What about um, Lebanese cypress? Isn't that thing that bushes out? <coughs> That's an evergreen. Um, I'm trying to think of evergreens that I like. I mean, before I saw because I don't like many of them. Red cedars. They, they, they were all going to be red cedars. Yeah. It wasn't going to be mixed. Right. And so um, nobody likes else? pine, so I'd say make them all white spruce, but same caliper, same height, same everything. Okay. Is that seem like a go for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. There's another, a Leland cypress is a tree that I'm familiar with, which is an evergreen and fill, grows rapidly and fills out very rapidly. You want to look at L-E-L-A-N-D. Leland, you know this? They're uh, <laughs> reviled in the profession, typically. Really? Um, the, the, I mean, they might be good for that. They're, they're often overused. They don't have to be beautiful there. They're just making a screen. Yeah. Right. If you want to mix, you can put them with Yeah, them. yeah, just look at that. Well, do we want to say yeah. entirely spruce unless Caroline comes up with some other suggestion to mix with it? I'm just happy so with that. Move this no. How do we know they can't get them? Just because they said it must be they can't get them in a timely manner because you can get them, but they must not be local or it must be a long lead time. And by the time they well, get it's them, also the end of the the planting season, season because so the that's what I mean. So by the time they got yeah. them, you can't plant them. So I guess the real question is why did they wait so long? And maybe because cedar is more expensive. Right. right. I mean, we had that discussion what two months ago probably. July 14th. I mean, you could say that. You could say if they owed us 10 foot red cedar and they want to substitute a spruce, but it's not a dollar for dollar swap, they give us a 12 foot spruce. Ooh, I like so that. That's, that's, that's very complicated. Who's going to enforce it? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> or the money back to the city. Well, so do you want to. Um, um, do you a mixture of Leland cypress, or are you saying, Andrew, you're saying? Andrew I would rather just go both. with pure spruce. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, typically, if I will if never plant a Leland cypress. I will always oppose it. You seem to have strong opinions about many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the procedural issue. <laughs> we voted to go for that specific tree. Cedars. But that's because they pitched it to you. 
it was on their plan, and they said, here's what we're doing. And we said, you must, go, you must go by the plan with the right. residents right. who are complaining sitting here, but now we're saying that but we're I, modifying the plan. I, I'm yeah. just, it's a, just a procedural question. Well, I guess what I, I, I mean, that, that's, I think it's a valid point to raise, whether or not you feel like you want to go back and bring it to a more of a public discussion. That's your call, or if you think this is really an administrative change, is it is it consistent with the plan to create screening at a certain height around that corner? So, I certainly felt like I couldn't yeah, make that okay. decision, which is why I brought it to you. And it what it did just come in, you know, day before yesterday, whatever the first right. email was about it. So we couldn't post it on the agenda. Um, uh, I couldn't reasonably foresee that that was going to be an item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think they have dallied around it. I think that now we're facing the end of the season. The, the problem of going back and talking about it is we'll miss this year. You think if we put it on for the next available? Yeah. yeah. And that seems to me like the neighbors would, on balance, prefer plantings than no plantings this fall. It seemed that way from the yeah. discussion. You were here. But it yeah. seems and ten foot. Yeah, I was here. It yeah. seems like this I is guess for the convenience of the yeah. contractor, not for the convenience can, of the Can people. we make it? Right. Of course, I wasn't here, so I don't know if I have an opinion about it. We'll let you know. <clears throat> can we make it conditional <coughs> how effective the, the thing is after make? I mean, is there a window where they would have to replace it if it didn't? They yeah, always, they always have, have a one, yeah. yeah. So even if they had the cedars, they would have to replace them if they died or... No, but I meant with, if it were possible, with a cedar and a string or something like that. Oh, I see what you're and saying. And you didn't like what was there. I don't know. I think that's too open-ended for, for them. I think they need to... I think for the, maybe for the neighbors, we should just try and move it forward. And if we're all okay with spruce, we should just... Okay. My only, only thing is, if that spruce is not an equal to a red cedar, right. a yeah, dollar value or longevity yeah. or whatever, then why can't we say, no, either give us the red cedar or give us a 12-foot spruce or 11-foot spruce to, to level the playing field? Well, you'd have to put it out to bed and get costs on, you know, find out what your cost on this tree that's not available would have been. And but that's not that's not the residents' issue. That's not ours. That's no, but the contractors' issue. And the reason they're offering up, I I I'd be willing to bet that if you took three trees of equal size and caliper, that a red cedar costs the most of these three trees listed. Almost so. Right. So okay. that so that a ten foot spruce is not an equal to a ten foot cedar. So, but maybe a twelve foot spruce is. And so, say your offer is rejected, give us what's specified. Or if you can, in a timely manner, we've given you this out for an 11 or 12 or whatever. Yeah. Right, but at the same time, the goal is to screen. The goal is not to make them spend money. So if if it's an, as an effective <coughs> thing, that's really what you want to see, right? And so, so if white right. spruce isn't as effective, then that makes sense. Don't, you know, make them go to the next season. But if you think that white spruce would be as an effective, as effective, but if the, if, if the contractor saves, by going to White's and making this up, to yeah. a White Spruce saves $3,000 in the process for a, a, a less desirable tree, right. yeah. then who, who benefits from that other than the contractor? The residents don't. The city doesn't. And so, but, okay. So, what's so I'm less, saying if... But what's less desirable? I mean, are you saying that White Spruce is less desirable than Eastern Red Cedar? Yes. Because so if the less screen of a screening has less screening capability? That's a, that's a less attractive trait. I mean, the, the, the red cedar has better year-round interest, has nice berries on it, berries, they are, um, which is a better food source for birds and things than, um, than a spruce, typically, if I'm remembering. Right? I'm not the best. I know I'm on the tree committee. I'm not the best tree person around that. Um, I don't think it's very but you know, Are they saying it's impossible or it's just expensive to get They the said they cannot find 10 foot. Okay, well, why don't we, you know, for the sake of kick it back and say, okay, we go with 12 foot spruce. And, you know, I don't know what 9 foot cedar is. 
and then they'll, then, they'll, <laughs> then, they'll, then, they'll, then they'll have to decide whether you know say we say that. Okay, go for spruce. What I want up here. We can get spruce anyway. But chickens. Yeah. yeah. Don't they but need chickens to work on the whole landscape. It's really yeah. ugly up there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the building is on the it's inside. Just, it's, just, well. it's very unfortunate they're coming back again on those. It says the landscape contractor has not been able to find red cedars at that height. Well, that's, that's quite possible this time of year. Uh -huh. I mean, this, is, this may be crazy in opening a can of worms, but does it make any sense for the city to be in touch with the others who have been most involved? Maybe or? they can find 12 foot ones. Well, I think only to the extent, I think the idea that it's a permit, you <coughs> to make sure that the screening is there. So, mm -hmm. to the extent that the, spreads, the spruce, white spruce, can provide the effect of screening, even maybe if it's not as interesting as the eastern red cedar, I think that's your call to say right. it's an appropriate substitution. Right. It's, pretty, it's a pretty far distance from the residence, and there's going to be those homes. That okay. Are it's yeah, but they don't. I mean, there's other, there's other. Yeah, if, yeah. if it's an adequate screen to go with slightly taller screws, let's just do that. Okay, so you're saying 12 feet? You're saying 12 feet. I mean, or you could say frame, we could do a mix of not like frames, nine foot cedars and, and 10 foot screws. Or, or just say, you know, I don't know what increments trees come in, but I know you can get a 12 foot spruce locally. Um, so, I, sure, I would say I would say that. Healthy Either the red cedar as specified or twelve foot spruce. Healthy evergreens, but not white pines. And no white pines. Yeah, I was really kind of surprised at that first pitch. Yeah. Yeah, the, that trash trace. Yeah. All right. That's so there's that one. There's that one. What else? No. Um, another change. Atwood Drive. They're gonna. They want to start construction for that new medical office building. Oh, yeah. So um, <coughs> now that they have a contractor, I guess they have some modifications to the building. Um, but the one, um, the footprint of the, the outside footprint of Cyclops Plus building isn't being proposed to be changed. But they want to add around the exterior of the building um, planter beds, which shrinks the dimension of the sidewalk. Um, so they, if, I don't know if I can pass this around, it's very tiny, but basically, they have the big plans upstairs, but they had around this outside edge is the a sidewalk, and on some at some dimensions it was ten feet. Um, it was small. It was narrower around the parking lot side of the building. So if you remember, the buildings were up to Atwood Drive. Yeah. Um, so they want to um, put in the shaded gray area our planter beds at the base of the building, so between the building and the sidewalk. Um, which would shrink the sidewalk to um, six feet on one side, seven feet um, along the front entrance side, six feet on the other side, and then a five-foot sidewalk along Atwood Drive. Do you guys have any issues with that reduction? Are they, are they increasing the planter bed or introducing it? They're introducing it. So there was never nothing there, there before. before. Well, just sidewalk right up to the Is it wide enough for a wheelchair? Yeah, I was just going to say. Five feet is wide enough for a wheelchair. Yeah, six and seven feet, that's still I'm surprised that I thought it was more than half anything before. Right. You need at least five, but these are six there? and seven, five in the back. There's five, the one along Atwood Drive, and then the sides are um, six, six, and then seven. along the parking lot side it's seven. How so why are, are we making beds? them all ten now? Well, they they weren't. It's just what they pitched in the in their. But no, in our, everywhere else in the city, we're making them ten, aren't we? No, not mm -hmm. sidewalks. Okay. Um, bike paths. Oh, bypass. Yeah. I knew it was something. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, say that again? How wide are the actual planting beds? Um, I do. <coughs> um, five feet, I have to pull up the email. They vary. On the Atwood Drive side, it's small. It's only one foot. One, is that right? One foot wide, deep. And then it's, it goes up to, on the sides, it, it looks like it's... Um, Three feet. Um, yeah, three feet around the other side. Frank, I don't think a one foot wide planting bed is wide enough for almost anything to survive well. 
I would, I would actually propose not putting that in. Is it planting bed or a drip edge? Like a well, they're showing it as a... Um, um, I don't even think they have like the overhang for people to get out the car. A, no, I think they have the internal, they have a, a pipe coming down. They're, they're collecting all their roof runoff mm -hmm. um, separately, so it's not dripping off the edge. I mean, if you put one foot, you might get that by the time you put in the wall. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so when you put like six inches of soil, it's not. It's, it's like a window box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's nice. one foot on the Atwood Drive yeah. side. Yeah, that, 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 I would, or something. I would yeah. either put it not Well, it doesn't have to be a wall. I mean, that's just... And three, three and a half feet on the other side. Is it a physical planter, or that's just a strip? Indicates landscape area to slope up from the walk to the finished floor elevation. Oh, so, so it's actual... Grade, grade level. It just says grade level, level land. It could be yeah, grass I mean, they, or anything. Um, they, when, the way he first described it was a planter bed. Um, so I took that to mean it was a structure on the edge. No, but it could just be the. Is, but um, just no, but the way it's, it's written on this plan is it says landscape area to slope up from the walk to the finished floor. So it could be a ground cover or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm in favor of that. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Okay. Let's support that. Okay. Andrew needs to go to his wedding. <laughs> no. I, I think I'm, I think my wife's working the divorce papers. Now. <laughs> um, okay. There can't be anything more. Than <coughs> if you're on. No, I had minutes, but we can do them later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Another short meeting under my. Uh, <laughs> Not that I'm running for the position. Why am I saying that?